Okay. Is, is everything in, Marisa? So yes. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining in our final workshop of this project. Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, please be aware that we are uh, recording the session uh, in order to, to show later and, uh, and well, just you to be aware. So, well, uh, thank you. I, some more attendance in the, in the last minute. Thank you for attending. I'm showing now here in the screen the agenda of this workshop. Uh, I will present briefly the project, uh, uh, the partners and the hats and, and the main purpose of the project, and then there will be uh, there will be the, the presentation, the specific presentations of the of the different uh, countries from Spain, Italy, Slovenia, and France. There will be also a specific uh, uh, session for showing what we have done about the LCA. Uh, there will be there is a minor modification here in the agenda. I will present uh, after media uh, specifically the the hydrogen uh, what we have done about hydrogen in one of the hats, and then uh, Julian Tami, which is the project advisor of this project, will give a brief presentation of the program, and then uh, a brief uh, debate between the partners in order to discuss about the main the main facts of the project, and if. If there is time enough, we'll open a question and answer session. So, okay, let's start. Let me <clears throat> share my the presentation. Okay, hopefully you are. You can view the presentation in presentation mode. So well, the for those of you of that you are aware of this project, uh, the main objective is to improve the sustainability of mountain hats uh, by using renewable energy integration, improving the energy efficiency, and installing insulation. There are eleven European hats involved in four different countries, and hydrogen uh, has been installed in one of the hats in Spain and also replication to other isolated systems, not only the HATS, but other installations in Europe is also pursued by, by LIFE. This is a, a LIFE funded uh, program, uh, project, and is uh, coming from the uh, LIFE 15 uh, climate change adaptation with this number. And uh, the the project is about to, to finalize. It started in June 2016 and is now 99% of completion because it ends at the end of this month. And there are three main uh, environmental expected impact. First is the reduction of 10 tons per year and half of CO2. Reduction or, or improving the energy efficiency in 20% and production of the amount of kerosene used by helicopters because uh, the, the the usual way that these installations provide electricity and heat is uh, by diesel gen sets and this diesel is transported by helicopter in in this uh, of grid installation so that's why uh, is one of the of the objectives as well this is a map where all the huts are located there are six in Spain, one in France, one in Italy, and three in Slovenia. And the partners are uh, Aragon Hydrogen Foundation as coordinator, uh, the Aragonese Federation of, of Mountain in, from Spain. In France is the, the Federation of Alpine Clubs of Mountain. In Italy is the Alpine Club. Uh, uh, Italy, the environmental park also in and in Slovenia there are three. These are the the Slovenia uh, Mountain Club, 
the Development Center for Hydrogen Technologies of Slovenia and University of Ljubljana. And here is also depicted uh, more or less the way we have done the job, meaning that there is a club uh, who owns the mountain or at least have access to the mountains and the technical technical uh, partner who develops the, in more detail the, the what is done and what are the, the impacts and the, and the results. And how have we done this project? Uh, in proposal phase, we have some ideas about how the, the huts uh, provided energy and, and different characteristics. But at the beginning of the project, we did an, a, 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 a throughout evaluation of the initial status of all the huts, uh, looking at uh, what's the weather like, uh, the technologies that are already installed, uh, how are they operating, which is the consumption during the different uh, seasons and how ca can be accessed the, the hat. Then we have done uh, with the assessment of different technologies uh, in order to find which are the, the most suitable one, which is the impact expected by applying these technologies, which is the cost of these technologies and how can we uh, implement them in the hats. Then the implementation phase. Uh, at the end, we identified 25 technologies in the 11 installations. And after implementation, uh, well, the, the demonstration phase, where at least the, at the beginning, the idea was to demonstrate about one year of, of all the technologies uh, installed in the huts. The reality is that has not been as easy as this one. Its technology uh, and its hat has different uh, different moments or, or characteristics in order to install them. Also, the, the different hats open in not the whole year, uh, others just in the in the summer season. And also, uh, this uh, methodology has been applied for all the hats except the French ones because. Uh, they uh, joined later in the project and the methodology is slightly different. Uh, the, my colleague from, from the France Federation will, will comment how we did that. And the technologies in that we have assessed, these are some, all of these, all of technologies that I'm going to list is what uh, we have assessed. Not all are installed in all the huts but just the specific ones. We will, that will be uh, explained later by, by its uh, partner. So we have installed photovoltaic is the most spread technology. It's very easy to install and very efficient. In some uh, hats also mean hydraulic or refurbishing some of previous installation or installing new one. The same with, with wind. The, the problem with hydraulic and wind is that they cannot be installed in protected areas, so it's not available to be installed in all the huts. Solar thermal installation for, for heating, some uh, automation process in order to, to improve the efficiency of the installation or protecting some of the equipment. Thermochimney or pellet stoves. Uh, insulation based on, on novel materials, more recycled materials. Also electrification in some of the huts where, uh, uh, where electricity is available more easily and also hydrogen, as I mentioned before. Some challenges that we faced during the project. Uh, one partner with you after some months so at the beginning of the project, it was replaced later by France Federation. Uh, the first hut where we installed technologies was in Slovenia, was destroyed by, by fire just after one week of the technology installed. It was a, really a, a pity. Uh, as also mentioned, some technologies uh, were installed at different pace in, 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 in the hut, so it's not, it was not possible to install everything at the same time everywhere. The opening periods of where the hats are opened and also the weather affected all the phases. For example, in Slovenia, all the hats open from June to September only. 
And also, obviously, uh, the pandemic caused delays in, su in uh, different suppliers and, and how we can access and install technologies and also has distorted the, the monitoring because the conditions that we established at the beginning of the, of the project as a reference are not valid anymore. So we have done a, a very detailed assessment of, of what we found. And just to show, to illustrate the effect of uh, COVID-19, here we can see the, uh, the amount of uh, visitors in the Spanish huts uh, in each month and the accumulated value. The green one is the, let's say, the, the reference in uh, pre-pandemic from July, this goes from July to June, and we can see that the accumulated and the amount of visitors is Yes, this is more or less maintained during the, the whole the whole year. And then the blue one means is just in the when the, the pandemic uh, started. And here at this moment is where uh, all of us were, were confined at home. So suddenly the amount of visitors dropped to almost zero. Uh, it's there were some in June. And in the next year, we can see that although during summer some some uh, visitors yet yeah, could uh, could attend the, the these huts, the accumulated is at this moment about half of what was expected as the reference. So this ha this has modified uh, all our way of of assessing uh, the the impact of the technologies. And well, my, my colleagues later will will comment that. We have elaborated notice boards and we have installed in the in the huts. Here is a, an example in one of the Spanish huts in Lizara, showing all the huts uh, included in the project, uh, the location, and also in the right hand side, all the technologies uh, that we have sel selected or at least assessed in the project and mm, highlighted those that are installed in in such hat and also in the top a, a short uh, diagram showing which is the reduction of co2 that we have achieved in each hat and finally well some words about the consortium it, it has been a, a really interesting uh, project and very funny in some moments this picture is from the kickoff meeting in in torino and, uh, and this one is uh, from the visit in the midterm uh, uh, moment of the project officer to one of the huts in Lizara in this case. And well, this one was in the, in the first year in, in, in Huesca. And well, as you can see, we, this has been a, a really, really fantastic project for all of us, a, a really amazing uh, uh, partners and uh, from from my side, I can say that we are friends from for for all of us. So it's uh, it's uh, it has been really really nice. And finally, uh, congratulations to the Slovenian uh, partners because they received a project, uh, sorry, an award just uh, one week ago as the most energy efficient project and a fantastic uh, job that they have done. So from here, just uh, to meet you and, and all of you, congratulations. <laughs> OK, so well, uh, this is my, the, what we have prepared as presentation of the of the project. So now is uh, is the turn of uh, Manuel, I think, to show what we have done with more detail in the Spanish huts. You are muted, uh, Manuel. OK. Yeah, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Please tell me where when it is done. OK. Can you see my my screen? It was, it's the last one, so ah. go to the first one and OK. Yeah, and that's all. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Uh, can I start? Uh, I'm Manuel Gutierrez. I'm uh, an innovation technician from the Hydrogen, Hydrogen, uh, Aragon Hydrogen Foundation. 
I'm going to talk about the uh, Spanish hat of the Life Sustain Hat project, the different hats we have uh, worked, the technology installed, and finally, I will talk you about very briefly about the results obtained in the after the monitoring period. We have uh, six mountain hats, Spanish mountain hats in the project, uh, all of them with their uh, own features, own characteristic, um, uh, all of them, the main important um, uh, idea is that all of them are completely off grid to the uh, electric grid. Apart from it, all of them are, uh, have their own characteristic and they are Lizara, Ivona Estebachimania, Estos, Cap de Yoset, that is the, the hut located at the highest altitude in Spain, in Spanish huts, uh, of these three, six huts, is located at two uh, and a half thousand meters, Montfalco, and um, the, finally the Gorit hut, that is located in uh, Ordesa National Park. Regarding the methodology, Pedro uh, have, uh, has talked you about the methodology. I'm going to tell uh, very briefly again the methodology applied only to the Spanish hat that you will see that is quite similar to the, all the methodology developed on all the project. Initially, we did an evaluation of the initial evaluation of the hat. In this case, the Spanish hat, we went to the hat, to all the hat, we talked with all the hat keepers and together with the Federation, we uh, recovered the data, evaluation of the weather, renewable uh, resources, technology previously installed, consumption profile. And um, after some talks, conversation with the hat keepers and Federation, we decide some possible options to introduce or to be introduced in the uh, hat. After then, after that, uh, uh, we did the assessment of the technology. We analyzed the different microgrids and uh, before and after this proposed uh, improvement proposed. We done the study of technology, the consumption, the loads, the cost of the technologies, and then finally we designed a final microgrid configuration that were uh, uh, finally proposed. After it, we start the three step of our methodology, what was the implementation. In this case, in Spanish, uh, Spanish hats, we decided seven technologies were selected uh, to be installed in uh, 18 different actions in all the Spanish hats together. Finally, uh, two were cancelled and finally 16 uh, uh, technologies or actions are executed. And finally, the demo, uh, the demo period, the demonstration period started after the implementation of technologies. Uh, we have between one and three years of a monitoring period uh, uh, that has been analyzed in each uh, action execute. Okay. Regarding these seven technologies selected in the Spanish hat, we, uh, we can talk about uh, the PIB installation, the most common technology uh, the most common technology installed in the Spanish hat, the electrification, that I, I will tell, uh, tell later about it, the electro efficiency action, there is not a technology, uh, is uh, an action that is uh, to introduce improvements in the electric grid of the hat to uh, improve the operation of the microgrid without the installation of a new technology. Uh, we will see some example, uh, example later. Uh, about this uh, kind of action that are possible to introduce in the microgrids of the huts. Uh, also, novel insulation, I will talk later too about it. A thermal chimney, pellet stove, and finally, hydrogen uh, technology as seasonal storage. Okay, regarding it, I'm going to talk about all uh, the huts individually, very briefly of all of them. And regarding Lizara, we can see three actions. Uh, firstly, the installation of four kilowatts of uh, photovoltaic panels, the automatic control of uh, batteries and just operation, that this is one of the uh, these electric uh, efficiency actions. In this case, we realized that the batteries, when they were under the optimal point of discharge, the uh, diesel generator didn't start automatically. So in this case, we installed a controller that now controls this uh, discharge of batteries and they are always uh, uh, up um, above this optimal point in order to in ensure the better uh, management of the batteries. 
And finally, the installation of a thermo chimney that is only a chimney that is closed and the uh, gas exit crosses um, a heat exchange, uh, exchanger that uh, heat water that is later used in the hut for uh, as hot water or in the heating system. The result in this hut are similar and expected, a good operation of the new automatic control. The hut keepers are uh, happy with this action because improve the management of the of the hut and um, about 3,000 uh, liters of diesel has been saved since the uh, uh, installation of the technologies. Regarding the Bachimani hut, I have uh, briefly talk, uh, talk about the initial status because it's quite different to other huts. In this case, we have excess of electricity thanks to a hydro turbine of 30 kilowatts that is uh, installed in the hut. But the main feature of this technology is that only operates during 10 months per year. What, uh, what have done in, the, in this hat? Okay, considering this excess or surplus of electricity, we have uh, introduced the electrification because the heating system initially was um, uh, operated with a diesel heater. So we have changed. We have introduced electric boilers and electric heaters in order to higher leverage the hydro turbine installed. So during these 10 months per year with excess of electricity, all the hat now is electric. So the heating system and the hot water system is now also electric and no diesel is consumed during 10 months per year. Furthermore, regarding these two months without a hydro turbine, because of um, level of water in the dam, uh, we have introduced a seasonal storage using hydrogen that later Pedro Casero uh, will talk um, uh, with uh, more details. Uh, as a result, fantastic result of electrification, longer operation than expected, more than 10 months, more or less more than 10 months, and we have reduced 7,500 liters of diesel since the installation of this action. Regarding the hydrogen technology, it is currently in a demonstration phase. Uh, next one, the Stoss hat. It is a, the, this is the hat with higher number of technology installed on it. Uh, we have, um, again, an uh, electric efficiency action. Uh, the automatic control of batteries is the same action that Lizara, I previously uh, explained it. And another one that is that uh, we have in this uh, had a um, uh, small hydro turbine, very old hydro turbine, uh, between three and five kilowatts. Okay, the, the idea is that uh, this hydro turbine was not the possibility of charging batteries uh, with the energy produced. So we have changed it, we have introduced this possibility to charge the batteries from the hydro turbine in order to take higher uh, uh, advantage of this energy production, which is renewable. Apart from it, we have the 2.5 kilowatt of uh, PV panels, a pellet stove with a recirculation that cross a room with the exit gases um, in order to heat these rooms. And an innovative insulation made for ship wool that we, uh, which uh, was developed uh, within another life project. So in this case, we have um, interesting networking with other project, life project, which developed this uh, innovative insulation, completely uh, uh, sustainable, made from uh, ship wool um, um, uh, with ship wool. Results again in this hat are similar than expected with a good operation of the new automatic control and the possibility of charging batteries with the um, hydro turbine. About uh, 5,000 liters of diesel saved since uh, uh, 2018 when the technologies were installed. Um, we remark that it would be very interesting to improve the hydro turbine in this hat to increase the renewable. that was out of the impact of the Sustain, uh, Sustain Hat project, but it would be very interesting for the uh, future in this hat. About Cap de Jose hat, this is the newest uh, Spanish uh, Aragonese hat 
and it is quite efficient with a very uh, important level of uh, insulation, thermal insulation, so the energy consumption is lower than in others due to its new design, new sustainable design. But we have installed four kilowatts uh, of PV panels. You can see it in the picture uh, in the roof of the hut. Two pellet stove and again in this case innovative insulation. Because of uh, this good level insulation of the hut, we have only installed in the cellar and the batteries room considering the humidity that uh, uh, we realize in this uh, kind of rooms. Only in the cellar and the batteries room. Uh, we have uh, reduced uh, 4,000 liters of DSL since the, uh, 2017 when the, uh, the first technology, the pellet stove, were installed. Um, uh, we have realized to the, a lower PV production than expected, probably due to the snow, high altitude of this uh, hut, or maybe the mountain surrounding uh, that can reduce the solar, the solar radiation. But uh, it's a only brief lower PV production. Uh, it's a, uh, only a brief de deviation from the initial uh, assessment, but it provides us again new lesson learned about about the PV production in the mountain hut that are very very interesting. About Monfalco, again we have PV panels. You can see that this is the most common uh, technology installed because it's cheap, it's uh, robust, it's easy to be installed, and it's a very good solution in, in many places. And again, another electric efficiency action. In this case, we have a we had a uh, pumping water in a natural spring that pumped water to the hut, but it was uh, it is located in the surroundings about one kilometer ago uh, away from the hut. Uh, initially, the hut keepers needed to go to this natural spring to start a diesel generation uh, generator to pump water. Uh, after it, some hours later, they had to return to uh, switch off this uh, diesel generator. We have changed this way of pumping water and we have introduced a new pump that is directly connected to the microgrid and is automatic. So the management of the uh, pump, uh, water pump is now automatic and it can be used directly from batteries. So in this case, uh, we have uh, we can uh, declare an important an excellent result of the improvement in this water pumping because during the summer previously to the installation the hut keepers need needed to uh, buy some water tanks uh, about uh, some water trucks to go to the hut with a high high affluence of people during the summer and since the installation of this uh, new way of pumping water no water has been purchased since the installation so hut keepers and, and of course the uh, sustain hut partner are very happy with this um, successful action introducing this hut and regarding the DSL again, about 3,000 liters has been saved since 2020 where the technologies were installed. And finally, the Gorit hat is the sixth uh, hat, uh, Spanish hat in the project. It is the uh, hat with highest number of visitors, especially uh, it is due to the uh, important locations in the Ordesa National Park. So uh, the idea was to install the largest PV installation of the project um, uh, in a hut of an Aragonese hut. We have introduced more than 20 kilowatts of photovoltaic and we have changed the batteries uh, with a new one with higher capacity. Altogether, we have reduced about 11 tons of CO2 since the installation. Okay, we now uh, know all the huts uh, belong to the uh, all the Spanish huts. Sorry, uh, belong to the project, and uh, I am going to briefly talk about the uh, monitoring result. Uh, uh, it is important to declare that the monitoring uh, protocol start always after the installation. So you can see in this picture, it, in the green square, that the uh, beginning of the monitoring result. Uh, depends on the installation of each technology, not only the hat, but also each technology. So we can see that uh, some hat has longer monitoring period than others. 
uh, it is important to say that only one methodology is developed also, although uh, it was applied considering the data recorded in each hard disk not always the same due to the different features of each hard and each microbit. Um, the most important uh, fact to highlight in this case is that the, is that the monitoring protocol has been deeply affected by the COVID pandemic. Why? Because we uh, the idea was to compare the same hat at the beginning and at the end, uh, at the beginning, um, at the before the installation of the technology and after the installation of the technology, but the same hat operation, more or less. And the only situation that changed is the introduction, the, 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 the installation of the new technologies. But what happened with the COVID pandemic? That the situation has deeply changed because you can see that, for example, in green and yellow square, that uh, during some months the, the hardware uh, closed, so the technology were installed but not monitored. At, during the other months uh, in the pandemic, the situation have changed because uh, the capacity was reduced. So the situation before and after the installation of technologies is not the same. So how much DSL have we uh, reduced thanks to a technology installed when the situation have deeply changed uh, considering a pandemic? OK, we have introduced our methodology. We have introduced some deviation that we now uh, considering this pandemic, but the results have severely uh, changed uh, considering the expected ones, of course. Um, uh, uh, another fact to uh, highlight is that we have not obtained only quantifiable results because we have introduced some improvement in the comfort and the management of the hat. I think that uh, a clear example is the uh, water pumping in, in Monfalco that the DSL reduction is not remarkable, but the introduction of, a, of the, in the management and the comfort in the HUD is, um, is remarkable. So it is very interesting to say that not only the quantifiable the results are uh, quantifica quantificable and we have introduced a improvement in the comfort and the management in HUD. But talking about uh, numbers, talking about uh, impact uh, in, uh, results, we have declared, we declared um, one, uh, 130,000 on kilowatt hours produced uh, uh, thanks to the renewable installation installed in the hub. Uh, near to uh, 30,000 of diesel saved thank you, uh, thanks to the, this action introduced. Um, we have avoided uh, close to 95 tons um, of CO2 thanks to the uh, sustained HAT project actions implemented in HAT. Uh, as a result, as a conclusion, in conclusion, we uh, declare that this result keep the currents with the expected one, uh, but uh, it is not easy to say that the objectives are accomplished because the situation has completely changed due to the pandemic. But we are completely confident and we are completely sure that with, without this uh, deviation thing, uh, uh, due to the COVID pandemic, we would achieve, of course, the result of CO2 and the SL safe of the indicators uh, expected at the beginning of the project. But it is true that we have only declared that the, this result keep the current with the expected without the COVID situation. So nothing more. This is the uh, actions implemented and the result obtained in the uh, Spanish part of the project, the Spanish hat. So thank you very much. Um, see you in the hat. In this case, see you in the sustainable hat. So thank you very much. OK. Thank you, Manuel, for, for the presentation. Well, it's clear okay. that uh, a, a lot has been done in, in the Spanish hats and, and well, the difficulties of uh, the when installing the technologies is difficult and the pandemic also has, has affected, as you mentioned. So, well, yeah. I think yeah, the the next speaker is I don't know exactly if it's I think it's uh, it's uh, Sabina from from Italy. 
Yep. Okay, so it's your the floor is yours. Okay, I share my screen. Okay. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Um, can you sh look my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, yes, perfect. Uh, please. Okay. Oh. Okay, um, I'm Sabina Fiorot from Environment Park, and I'm here with uh, Osvaldo Marengo from uh, uh, CAI, uh, Italian Club, uh, uh, Alpine Club. And uh, uh, we, we are partner of the Sustainable Art uh, Project. Uh, we, we are involved uh, in the activities mainly uh, linked to the um, One Art in, uh, in Italy. Uh, the hut is uh, Torino Hut. Uh, it's located at high, very high altitude, 3,375 meter. Uh, it's an atypical uh, hut because uh, um, it's uh, grid connected, uh, because the hut is reached uh, by the cable way and uh, it's directly connected to the to the grid um, it's uh, um, normally opened uh, um, 11 months uh, per year um, and with uh, uh, an average visit per day around 150 to 200 peoples uh, with uh, an average accommodation uh, um, that normally is around 7,700 uh, uh, per year. And uh, um, are involved in, these, uh, uh, in the activities of the hut uh, around uh, uh, 10 employees. Uh, so as I said, this is an atypical because normally the huts are not uh, grid connected. Um, and uh, it was also uh, interesting to study which kind of technologies uh, to implement uh, in, this, uh, in this hut. Um, this, this is the notice board of uh, Rifugio Torino. What uh, um, we, uh, we and Kai, uh, we analyzed to install uh, in, this, uh, in this hut um, come from uh, the, the methodology that uh, Manuel uh, presented to you before. Uh, so there, there was a, a first uh, evaluation of the initial status of the hut. Uh, also uh, involving visits uh, uh, the hut and also uh, involving and asking uh, uh, information and suggestions from uh, uh, the hut owners. Uh, there was then uh, an assessment of the te technologies uh, via microgrid simulation. Uh, and after that, uh, uh, there was uh, uh, the designing and then the implementation phase of the technologies. Um, the technologies that will be, that are installed uh, now in the hut are uh, the photovoltaic uh, uh, plant, and we will also uh, look at just some pictures uh, about this uh, installation. Uh, the um, uh, electrification, because uh, um, uh, yes, th th there is a, um, an installation of uh, an interesting water treatment uh, plant and, we and water recovery. Uh, we are also the electrification of these uh, um, of these part and lines in order to um, to optimize um, and to use the waste water that come from uh, from the hut, and we will check better after. Um, and uh, yes, uh, after that, uh, after the implementation, uh, there is the demo phase. Um, it's interesting because uh, Kai started as soon as possible during the beginning of the project, the installation of each technology. So uh, the demo phase started um, in the um, 2018, uh, and uh, we, can, uh, we can collect we collected uh, three years of uh, demonstration results. Uh, then um, here I have presented, we have presented the, the main installation. Uh, the PV plant uh, are around uh, four uh, kilowatt uh, of uh, uh, power. Um, and uh, um, 
This PV energy is used to heat the drying room with a reduction of diesel consumed by the diesel fan, uh, because normally uh, in this uh, room they use uh, um, a, a diesel uh, stove, and so there was a, a reduction of this uh, um, uh, of the diesel uh, that was monitored during uh, all the demo phase uh, of the hut. Uh, and as you can see, also um, you can check the installation in the facade of the uh, of the building, uh, because uh, uh, as you know, uh, we are in a, in extreme uh, condition, weather and uh, altitude uh, uh, and uh, wind, and so um, it was necessary to install these uh, uh, PV panels in the facade of the building. Uh, in the south part uh, of uh, the building, uh, more uh, expo exposed to the to the sun, uh, and then also a, a, a battery storage was installed in order also to um, to maintain and to store the energy uh, pro productive. Um, then the second uh, installation. Uh, that um, was done at the beginning of the project uh, in the Rifugio Torino hut uh, was the water recovery through filtration. Uh, it's an energy efficiency action uh, and uh, um, it was used for, uh, yes, to recover the wastewater um, and uh, uh, with uh, a plant of filtration. Uh, that you can uh, you can check uh, in the pictures. Uh, there were also just some water tank uh, and also um, a number of pumps uh, in order to, um, to 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 send the water uh, in uh, in the in the refugio uh, at. Um, so this was also another interesting installation for this uh, um, uh, for the project. Then the last installation. Uh, was uh, uh, the water recovery via snow dissolution. Uh, it's another uh, energy efficiency action. Um, normally, um, uh, so th the water uh, is, uh, um, is is very very uh, interesting. This uh, this technology because normally uh, the water is uh, um, is sent in the in the refugio hut uh, via uh, cableway helicopter also uh, pick up. So uh, there is an high consumption of uh, and emission of uh, uh, CO2 linked to the transportation of the water to the hut. Uh, so what uh, uh, Kai um, has done uh, during the installation is uh, to, um, to install uh, uh, new flaps and, and gutters uh, uh, for snow collection uh, in uh, Rifugio Torino Vecchio, Rifugio Torino Hold, and then with uh, a tunnel connection um, to, uh, to send via with uh, uh, pumps uh, the water directly for culinary, culinary uh, use uh, to, the, uh, Torino, uh, to the Torino hut. Uh, normally, during the, um, the summer, uh, the water is uh, uh, come from uh, the glacier uh, between June and to September. Uh, but in the other periods, uh, we, uh, we 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 check it and uh, we demonstrate that. Um, mm, the, the plant that was installed was useful to guarantee uh, the water use uh, for this uh, for this hut. Um, then, um, as uh, Manuel also uh, presented before, um, there was a first uh, an evaluation of uh, initial status, then also an assessment of the technologies. So during the development, uh, uh, some action has been uh, proposed in order to improve the energy balance of, of the hut and also to reduce uh, the, uh, the impact. And uh, 
uh, a, a specific calculation uh, was done uh, during the state of uh, the project uh, at the beginning and also at the end of the project. So uh, here we, we presented in this table um, the status, uh, what uh, was calculated at the beginning of the project, so uh, with uh, an, now, an high um, um, emission of uh, CO2, uh, also because, uh, as we said, uh, Torino Hat is an atypical um, uh, at because it's uh, directly connected to the grid, so the, me the methodology implemented is not the same as the rest. So the CO2 emissions uh, have been calculated considering the electricity mix uh, of Italy. And so uh, here we, we start with uh, uh, NI uh, emission of uh, CO2. Uh, but uh, the state uh, uh, of the project at the end, uh, as you can see, is, it was possible uh, only in uh, calculation mode to reduce uh, um, uh, with uh, 10 ton per year of CO2 emission. Uh, it's around uh, in uh, 14 uh, percentage of uh, reduction of this uh, CO2 emission. And also we have reported also the uh, NOx emission uh, at the beginning and uh, at the end uh, of, uh, of the project. Uh, then, um, what we have done um, during the demonstration phase? Um, we, um, we started with a methodology to, uh, to calculate uh, and also to install a specific data logger in order to, um, to measure uh, the, the energy produced by PV panels. Uh, if we check for the heat production, uh, the state uh, of the beginning, normally in, uh, in the hut, uh, in, there, there was a diesel stove. Uh, with an high consumption of diesel, and also uh, the diesel was uh, um, linked also to the transport uh, via uh, cable, cable way. At the end, um, or during the sustainable art project, uh, with the installation of PV panels, um, it was not um, possible to, uh, all the diesel use was uh, avoided, uh, and also uh, to the transportation via uh, cable way. Uh, so uh, this uh, demonstrates uh, a reduction uh, of the CO2 uh, emission uh, and at the end of, uh, of uh, the project. Uh, so, as uh, I said, the PV installation allows uh, replacing diesel eaters uh, by electric ones, uh, reducing the diesel consumption in the hut. Uh, the energy uh, from the PV panels uh, was used, as I said, to heat the dry room uh, with a reduction of the diesel consumed by uh, the diesel uh, fan. Then, uh, linked to the water transport, uh, what uh, was done um, in the Refugio Hut uh, before uh, the Sustainable Hut uh, project? Normally, the water uh, was uh, um, uh, taken by uh, the glacier only during the summer and with uh, uh, a pump, uh, uh, a system of pumping that consumes electricity was used for uh, culinary, um, um, for culinary uh, use. Uh, then um, the other water for showers, uh, toilets, uh, uh, drink and other, um, other use uh, was transported via uh, dedicated water tanks uh, um, that are put in the, in the cableway um, and also before transported via pickup plus cable way, uh, and then also using in uh, uh, some specific period of the year, also using helicopter. Uh, so as you can see, um, these, all these use um, in, uh, implement the consumption of electricity uh, and so diesel, uh, diesel use with an high uh, emission of the CO2. Um, so, um, Sorry, Sabina, uh, just a couple of minutes for, for ending, please. Yeah. 
Yes, because yeah, we are running out of time of your session. So please uh, follow, but uh, try to squeeze in yeah, two yeah, minutes. Okay. okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, so this is what uh, I summarized. So the main uh, transport uh, linked to the hut, so cableway plus pickup, cableway and helicopters. Uh, and then what uh, this, uh, this scheme demonstrate what was done um, during the project. Uh, so um, recovery of melting snow and rain uh, and uh, a dedicated uh, plant for treatment of uh, the water. Um, during with the uh, dedicated data logger, we measure uh, some um, consumption and some use. And after that, we can come to the um, to the final uh, to the methodology that I presented before. So, uh, if we use PV panels, we reduce uh, uh, the CO2 emission, and the same was done for the water uh, water recovery. Uh, so we don't use a uh, pickup, cable way, helicopter, and so on. So um, in final, uh, what uh, we calculated, what we, what are the main results? As I said, the um, sustainable act monitoring year uh, started in the uh, 2018. Uh, during the first year, uh, there was a production of renewable energy of uh, two. 1,800 around kilowatt per hour per year with uh, a diesel saving of around 300 liters per year and so a linked uh, CO2 avoided of uh, around 80 kilograms uh, of the period. The same was monitored with uh, the water uh, recovery plants with a diesel saving of around 500 uh, uh, liters per year and also an high um, kilogram uh, of uh, CO2 avoided. We also monitored uh, the second year that was uh, uh, unfortunately uh, during the COVID pandemic period. So as you can see, um, we register uh, for the amount that the hut was opened um, a, an high reduction of CO2, uh, but uh, uh, not so much uh, as the first uh, monitoring here. And then uh, in final, the, the third uh, monitoring here that uh, um, arrives uh, uh, in, uh, in September of this year, with also collecting all the CO2 avoided during also this uh, period that also, uh, unfortunately, um, there was also a restriction um, for, for the hut opening. So um, in this last slide, what uh, we summarize uh, is uh, the three years monitoring period with PV implementation. So this is the total uh, of uh, uh, diesel saving and CO2 avoided. Um, and uh, uh, this is the sum of the three years and also the sum of the three years monitoring period with water uh, recovery. So as you can say, uh, as you can check, um, uh, it's an high, um, an high quantity for CO2 avoided around 22 ton uh, of CO2 for three years of uh, uh, demonstration. Um, so, as I said before, Italian hat is uh, totally different um, because uh, we are uh, grid connected. Uh, the choice of photovoltaic panels uh, um, was uh, very interesting uh, for this installation and also uh, the results are very, very, um, very interesting for, uh, for the hat. Um, the, the choice of the water uh, recovery um, was also another good, uh, presented also good results, uh, and uh, this is why um, uh, Kai Torino uh, probably will, uh, will try to uh, replicate this uh, kind of uh, recovery of water uh, in other, in other arts uh, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, so that's uh, all for uh, the Torino Hut. Uh, thank you for this workshop. Uh, and these are the main results uh, of uh, Torino Art uh, in Sustainable Art project. Thank you, thank, thank you Sabina, for, for sharing uh, what the, the Fujio di Torino uh, looks like and the differences with, with other hats. So it's, uh, 
I think it, it was a very a very good uh, idea to refugio di Torino to come into the project because it, it offers a completely different view uh, as the others. So it complements very well the others. Thank you. So well, just uh, we can follow with the with the workshop and now we turn to Mitya Mori from the University of Ljubljana to show the results of the Slovenian hats. So please, Mitya. Hello to all. Hello. I will just yeah, I will just share my screen. Uh, yeah, I have too many. Ah, okay. You can see it, huh? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Please go on. Thank, uh, thank you for for a few minutes. I won't be long, uh, but uh, still, uh, it was a lot, a lot of happening in this uh, perfect project uh, for a Slovenian site. Uh, uh, I will present uh, briefly what we did, but a lot of things I won't say because we together in the Slovenian side and in the consortium overall, we did quite a lot of things that will uh, uh, that will uh, actually we will use that also in the future uh, to 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 uh, to use it and maybe to apply new project out of uh, lessons learned. Uh, so uh, I will go through the uh, three huts uh, that were uh, uh, in the in the scope of the project on the Slovenian side. I will go through briefly through technologies installed, why, what, and how. Uh, I will also show, show you investments because at the end of the day, uh, very clear data are most useful for, let's say, hut owners. Uh, how much, uh, what is the problem, what is the challenge? Uh, uh, so to motivate the uh, next uh, mountain hut uh, owners to continue with that approach and with installation of new technologies uh, to reduce environmental impacts and also uh, to, uh, to exclude the diesel, uh, not just from the environmental point of view, but also from the noise point of view. Uh, so three partners uh, from the Slovenian side, I will speak in uh, uh, in the name of all uh, Dusan and today are here present. So uh, uh, Dusan from uh, Planinska Zvezda Slovenia, so the Alpine Association of Slovenia, that was actually the core uh, of uh, that we reached uh, toward to the mountaineering huts and development center for hydrogen technologies. We had some idea to implement hydrogen also in Slovenian huts, but apparently opened just for four months a year. That is not feasible to do. I'm coming from University of Ljubljana, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. But in between, I worked also for four months in Huesca, and I was at least in one Spanish hut uh, present in Lizara when we had meeting there, and we, it was a uh, uh, very pleasant time for uh, for me uh, to be with the perfect group uh, in uh, uh, Huesca uh, team. So uh, three huts that we have here, it's Dom Valentina Stanica under Triglau, then Kotzbeko uh, Dom, um, uh, uh, on Koroshica and Pogačniko Dom. Uh, we will go step by step. Uh, uh, step by step. Kotzbeko Dom was the first one uh, that was, uh, um, let's say, in our objective. We did visit in August, then preparatory actions in July 20. 2017, mounting the equipment 14 of October, so we are approaching uh, uh, the end of the October. That was not a pleasant time for the project. New system was operated, everything was mounted. So you can see here was just photovoltaic installed with the battery pack uh, on the gel uh, technology. Uh, and uh, uh, just 20 of October that happened. So it was very misfortune. We were very sad. We didn't know how to approach and how to continue. Thanks to Pedro, the team in Westca, and uh, thanks to the European Commission, we managed to get additional funding for additional huts. So we still uh, were left with two more huts to go. 
but of course with nothing to show and that was actually very uh, not motivational but we continued uh, pushing uh, our background is also sport background so we are not quitters uh, so we went forward these uh, are the data about the Kozbeck uh, hut, uh, also about the investment, about the contractor voltage. You can look up that later when the, uh, uh, the, the presentations will be available. But that's very important to share because for the future uh, in possible investments in Slovenian huts, this is the thing that owners and caretakers should know. Then the second one, Pogačnik Udom. Actually, we approach the, 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 the um, equally. We visit, made the second, uh, we did the second visit because uh, apparently the load profile is the most important to get, and that is, uh, and also the renewable energy sources availability, and nothing is measured in the mountain hut. So you have to make thousands of interviews uh, uh, to, to make these load profiles and we managed. Then we mount the equipment, everything was in operation in July 2019 and at the end also, I don't know, uh, can you see the, the movie? You can see the movie. So at the end, uh, this is just a, a short movie. We mounted the 1000 watt turbine uh, and uh, the, the photovoltaic uh, on uh, uh, 8.55 kilowatt. And from that point on, uh, not, uh, no diesel is used anymore in Pogacnik hut. So we also, uh, and lithium-ion batteries that were specific in this case, we are also learning about uh, lithium ion batteries because they are during the winter a bit more tricky to be kept uh, on the safe way to be run again next year. So uh, we are learning and we are also uh, um, uh, approaching with the new partners uh, in, in the next steps uh, to study uh, system optimizations also with new Tesla batteries. But this is for the future. This is the, uh, let's say, the investment profile and what we installed. So um, uh, also you will see, uh, you can check this uh, later uh, and it is working well. Then the last thing uh, last year uh, uh, um, that, uh, let's say, uh, yes, in 2020 we installed that. So the first visit uh, uh, with Dushan, then mounting the equipment in July, uh, it was on the main building and on the storage building. Uh, and uh, we also managed to, to, to install that uh, properly. So we we have some 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 uh, good uh, footage photovoltaic system in two uh, parts wind turbine thousand watts so uh, system uh, batteries. Mitya, sorry, there are some problems with your microphone. We we cannot hear you. So this is also the last uh, the last um, hut uh, that we successfully uh, uh, did. And uh, what is very important here is that the caretakers and hut owners are are very satisfied with uh, everything. We did quite a lot of publications, events, uh, also Pedro was in, in uh, Ljubljana for one uh, nice events uh, in the, uh, uh, we did also uh, scientific publications uh, with Pedro and Manuel and one uh, publication is still uh, uh, from the Lizara hut is still in the progress. Uh, we actually also received the award for the conclusion uh, of everything that was also mentioned from Pedro that was really a nice gesture to be recognized in Slovenia. And with that we get also the audience in Slovenia in, and we will try 
to to uh, to uh, to continue with this work and uh, help uh, uh, Planinska Zveza Slovenia and the clubs to maybe install the system in uh, 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 mountain huts in the future. Uh, yeah, so I would conclude just that we had the best sustained team uh, here. Uh, I enjoyed this project. It was really a pleasure working for, uh, for this because it was uh, for the first time, for the long time back, that the knowledge of the engineer could be used for the public uh, service because the mountain huts are uh, publicly oriented and, uh, uh, and it was uh, really a pleasure and hopefully we will find ourselves in maybe next uh, projects, next life project with uh, also uh, so great idea that was uh, in this case. Thank you again for uh, le letting us to be part of this project and uh, uh, for discussion. I'm always available. Okay, thank you, <clears throat> media. Uh, for us, is uh, also a pleasure uh, we're working with you, and also your time in in Guesca was fantastic. And also, thank you for the presentation, very clear and uh, yeah, very. Uh, it's it's good to know that uh, some huts can be uh, converted to a full sustainable installation that you <clears throat> you saw in in Slovenia. So and, and also the what you mentioned about to be public oriented the project and to show results uh, everywhere and that's a, a very good uh, good point that we have tried but we have to to push obviously in in future projects. Thank you. So Thank well you. now it's uh, it's the turn to Bat Baptiste please from the France Federation. He will also show uh, some. Okay, a different approach to uh, to what to do in in French hats. So please, uh, Baptiste. Hello, everybody. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yep. Just put in presentation mode. Yes. Yes. Here okay. Great. Is. Thank you. So hello, everybody. I'm Baptiste André from uh, the French Alpine Club. I'm working and as a project manager to refurbish our huts. Um, we we join uh, the Sustain Hut project uh, quite late in 2019. Uh, therefore, we did not have uh, could have enough time to implement uh, renewable uh, energy, uh, but we, we we still want to participate. Uh, therefore, we propose to compare two huts, uh, recently refurbished one, uh, which is the Don Parache hut, uh, and we propose to compare it with an old one, which could be uh, the state of the play at the beginning, uh, in order to, to try to participate to this project. And the, the old hut is the Evet hut. Uh, you can see in the map that the, these two huts are quite close uh, from each other and uh, they are quite comparable. They are almost at the same altitude, uh, 2,500 uh, meters above sea level. And uh, yeah, uh, this uh, table, uh, you have details about these two huts. But I will uh, uh, go through it. Um, the technologies we've implemented in the uh, Damparache hut is uh, they are uh, the new solar PV panels, uh, new solar thermal panels, a small hydro turbine, and uh, insulation of the hut as we uh, fully refurbished it and uh, we, we also extend the surface of the hut. Um, uh, just a few figures about the, the sustainable refurbishment. Uh, thank you very much to Manuel, uh, which, uh, uh, who um, deals with 
all the, the figures and the calculations uh, with our data. Uh, so uh, solar thermal um, uh, leads to uh, uh, one uh, four thousand liters less of gas per year. Uh, electrical system PV plus hydro turbine uh, leads to uh, one hundred liters of gas less and produce uh, seven hundred kilowatts of electricity more. And in globally, uh, we found that uh, during the monitored period, uh, previous year, uh, the, we, we have uh, 1.5 tons of CO2, uh, um, uh, less uh, CO2 emissions. Um, I just want to emphasize uh, some lessons learned uh, um, with this refurbishment and with other refurbishment in the uh, mountain climate and uh, uh, isolated sites. Um, the first one uh, is about the solar arrays implantation. Uh, we found that the batteries uh, still require uh, float charging during uh, a float charging current during winter, and uh, if uh, we don't pay attention to the implantation of the arrays, uh, it can be snow covered or it can have shadows over it, and uh, therefore it can be a good thing to to have two arrays. Uh, like you can see on the left uh, side of the slide, uh, um, one on the roof for summer uh, best production and one uh, vertically installed uh, to uh, prevent uh, snowfalls. Uh, you can see on the right side uh, another uh, modification uh, to prevent from snow cover for uh, winter uh, electricity production, just in order to 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 keep the batteries uh, running. Um, another, uh, uh, what we've done in the Dent Parache is a tiltable mount. Uh, you can see that the PV solar panels are placed vertically. But if you look at the, the, the mounting uh, system, it's a tiltable one. And uh, the, like that, we can uh, um, optimize uh, summer production and, uh, and um, just put the, the panels vertically uh, during winter uh, to prevent the uh, snowfall. And the production is enough to, to, to charge the batteries and keep them charged during uh, winter. Um, another lesson learned uh, with the hydro turbine, uh, we had quite lots of difficulties to uh, adjust the settings of the turbine, uh, depending on the um, flow waters, and uh, we, it took us almost two years to adjust it uh, quite properly. Um, and we also uh, learned that the, it, even if it's a small one, it's just uh, 600 uh, watt, uh, it produces a lot of electricity. And uh, we have to um, dissipate this uh, electricity uh, um, to the hot uh, water buffer tank, uh, and it, you can see on the the diagram uh, that it, the micro turbine can uh, provide electricity uh, for the hut, for the batteries charge, and it still uh, uh, have some uh, production for the hot uh, water. Um, Another uh, lesson we learned, it's not only in the Damparaché hut, but it's in general uh, when you refurbish a hut uh, in a cold climate. Uh, you have to pay uh, attention to when you insulate a hut. Uh, 
uh, especially if you insulate it from inside, from the interior side. Because if, like you can see it on the left uh, uh, picture, uh, if you put the insulation inside uh, the hut, uh, the wall will remain uh, cold. Uh, and if uh, with the, all the moisture inside the hut, uh, it can uh, condensate and uh, create a liquid water inside the, the wall. Uh, on the right side, it's exterior insulation, which uh, is um, which produces less uh, problem with uh, moisture and water. Uh, maybe, oh, there is just a small figure on the left. Uh, just look at the center of the, the, the picture. Um, we, we can see uh, uh, that with exterior insulation, the, the, the inside uh, side of the wall is about uh, five uh, uh, degrees. And uh, if, you, no, sorry, the inside side of the wall is about 18 degrees for uh, 20 uh, temperature inside. If you put the insulation inside, uh, the 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 wall will be uh, quite cold, and uh, humidity and moisture uh, will condensate when it uh, meets this cold surface. To prevent that, to avoid that, uh, you have to put a vapor retarder. It's one mean uh, to to prevent that, and. Uh, we we we'll learn that the, this problem can. Uh, occur maybe two, three or five years after the refurbishment. And uh, you have to take this into account when you design the, the, the insulation of the hut. Uh, just uh, some uh, low take fridge. Uh, I find this uh, uh, very uh, funny and interesting. Uh, a former uh, a teacher uh, um, um, imagine uh, to to do a like a low tech fridge for the cheese and the vegetables. He just uh, use the the cold water running through a water cooler. Uh, you can see here and uh, put a, a fan in front of it. And uh, with uh, the 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 low temperature of the water, it it uh, it. It blow fresh air inside this room, and uh, like that, the keeper can uh, uh, keep uh, cheese and vegetables with uh, almost uh, uh, it's almost free of energy. Just a, a 12 volt uh, fan to to uh, manage uh, this. Um, to finish, uh, if it works, oh sorry. Here it is. Um, what we've learned in general is uh, we, we, when we refurbished the Don Parachet hut, we don't just we didn't just add uh, um, solar uh, panels. Uh, we, we we refurbished the entire hut and we insulate it. And uh, this. Uh, uh, this uh, entire refurbishment uh, allow us to decrease uh, fossil fuel consumption uh, because of uh, we we require less energy uh, to heat the hut to heat the water the hot water and we also uh, found that it uh, uh, deeply increased the hikers and the keepers uh, comfort. Uh, we we put a um, data logger for temperature inside the uh, dormitory of the Dent Parache, which is insulated and uh, mechanically uh, ventilated. And we also put a uh, um, um, temperature data logger in an other uh, hut uh, dormitory. And we find that uh, during winter, even when the, the hut is not uh, keep it, it uh, and thus not uh, heated. Uh, we we still have uh, 
plus five degrees in thanks to the insulation of the hut. Uh, and the, 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 I would say that the general uh, lesson of this uh, participation to this project is uh, it can be a, a real, it can have a real leverage effect if you do an entire refurbishment, not only uh, just put uh, renewable energies, but also uh, refurbish the hut and insulate it in order to to in lower the fuel consumption, of course, and in order to increase the comfort of the occupant uh, of the hut. Thank you, everybody, to listen to me. Thank you a lot, Baptiste. It's a, a very, very nice presentation. It's in, impressive, uh, all the data that you have and the good results that you are showing. It's really something very, very important, the, 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 the relevancy of the, of the insulation, for example, as you mentioned, and yeah, the, the impact that it has in the necessities of energy. Uh, in the hats. So, yeah, th thank you. Thank you very much. It's very good uh, results for the project. You're welcome. And now I, uh, I'm i going to jump in again in order to, to talk about hydrogen in one of the hats. So, let me share my screen again. Okay. So, I think you can see my presentation oops that's not the first one sorry that's not the first one <laughs> okay this one um, what if you are looking at the presentation no sorry one second okay so now I guess that is, yes, you are looking at, uh, at the hat. This is uh, in hat. But uh, first of all, I, I am aware that I forgot to mention who I am. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do it now, although late. I am Pedro Casero. I am the head of innovation department of Aragon Hydrogen Foundation. I'm the coordinator of this project since the very beginning, in fact. When I came into Aragon Hydrogen Foundation, this was the first uh, project that I started to manage. So it's uh, also a very special for me. Well, just uh, uh, we have mentioned several several times about hydrogen, and this is a, a picture that illustrates very well why hydrogen has sense in this hat. On the right hand side, we can see the, the hut, Bachimanya hut in the Aragonese uh, Pyrenees. And there is very close uh, a reservoir with water and uh, hydro turbine shelter or hydro turbine uh, specifically devoted to uh, supply electricity to the hut. It's uh, 30 kilowatts and it's, uh, it's working almost the whole year or at, at the beginning of the project, at least that was the situation around between 10, 11 months of operation. But when the melting season starts, the reservoir is empty in order to cope with all the water that will come. And uh, these are the, the elements existing at the beginning of the project, this hydro turbine of 30 kilowatt, and the excess of the energy that is not used in the hut is dissipated in resistances in different places. There are two gensets, one of 8 kilowatts and the other one of 25 kilowatts, and a, a batteries bank of uh, 73 kilowatts, which are used usually during the operation of the gensets in order not all of them to be continuously operating, but they charge batteries and the, the hat uh, uses it. And as I mentioned, around 10 months per year, the, the hydro and the rest the rest of the year. And this is the, uh, the profile of uh, electricity consumption that we measured in, in the hat uh, in different seasons. In winter season is the, the green one, in summer is the red, and in mid-season is in, 
in blue. So we can see the, 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 the peaks that uh, used to be at the beginning of the day, midday and at the end of the day. And also the because of the amount of visitors during summer is where the peak consumptions uh, happen. And what we uh, devised regarding hydrogen in order to avoid or at least reduce the use of diesel during the period when there is no hydro, uh, we decided to install a seasonal storage of renewable energy using the excess of the turbine during those months because of the turbine uh, of the hut is not using uh, all the power that can that the turbine can produce. So we decided to use that energy, produce uh, hydrogen for the, the, uh, certain periods, uh, store it until it's required in those periods when the hydro is not uh, is not done. So this is done by these three elements that are depicted on the right hand side. The electrolyzer, which is where the hydrogen is produced using uh, electricity and the mineralized water. Uh, there is a, a storage of this hydrogen and it's uh, one of the features of hydrogen is that it can be stored there for longer periods without any loose. And when it's required, there is a device which is called fuel cell that using hydrogen and using oxygen from the air, it produces uh, electricity and water, pure water as a residue. And the idea is to charge batteries and to feed the hat. Here also we can see in the electrical system of the hat that the turbine and the gensets can produce in three phase but the batteries are working in just one phase and also the fuel cell. This is relevant because there are some appliances in the hut like the like the coffee machine or a dishwasher that uses three phase. So uh, even uh, when even having batteries or, or hydrogen available, there are some cases that the insects have to be have to be in operation. And to understand the restrictions and boundaries to, to implement hydrogen, one is the budget, but it's uh, always uh, a restriction. Uh, the main elements should be prototypes. The mountain height is at very high altitude that implies a different oxygen content, so it affects slightly to the fuel cell operation. Helicopter has to be uh, used for any, any carrying. And there are many modes to produce hydrogen. So the solution that we devised was, first of all, not use any compressor for storage of hydrogen uh, in order to look the, the most simple way of implementing this. Uh, the, the production is not required to be very high, so we decided to install an 0.25 normal cubic meter per hour or 0.5 kilograms per day of production at very high pressure, in this case 50 bar. This is not uh, standard at all. It's uh, the usual standard for electrolysis is around 30, 35 bar. So this is uh, the prototyping characteristic of the of the electrolyzer. Uh, and we are using uh, PEM technology is one of the most extended uh, technologies for using in an off grid situation. And because it uh, the, the maintenance is easy. Uh, also, we needed a high efficient fuel cell at any altitude. We'll talk about that later. And at the end, uh, after selecting and acquiring all these elements, uh, with the rest of the budget allowed, we, we selected the, the storage, the maximum storage available. This is a picture of the electrolyzer uh, that we bought from a Spanish supplier, Hydrogena. And uh, well, apart from the, the characteristics I, I also mentioned, it can be regulated from zero to 50 bar, the, the production. And uh, yeah, it's uh, very complete regarding uh, warnings and alarms. And if anything goes uh, out of what is expected, it stops automatically. Regarding storage, the limitation is the helicopter. It can carry only 800 kilograms of, of, of load. Uh, also, it's a public mountain, so we didn't want to have a high footprint and also the, the climate conditions are, are tough. So we uh, assessed three alternatives. One is this uh, rack of bottles made of carbon fiber from Spanish supplier. 
Uh, other one is a steel tank, uh, typical one that uh, can be uh, designed and built specifically for, for the project also. And also another kind of tanks, type four in this case, from a uh, from French supplier. The final decision was uh, this one because it was cheap or relatively cheap, uh, low weight. If this uh, rack of bottles is made of steel, it weighs uh, almost two tons. In this case, with this uh, carbon fiber material, it weighs less than 600 kilos. So the helicopter has no problem in carrying it. Also, uh, we decided to put in a horizontal way because it, the, the technology allows it and it uh, it eases the installation in, in the hat. At the end, uh, we will uh, store four kilograms of hydrogen, which is enough for demo purposes. And regarding the fuel cell for uh, produce electricity coming from hydrogen, uh, we we selected a, a product from Spectronic, a supplier from Singapore. It's also a PEM, and it's the it has a, a characteristic or a feature that was implemented by the supplier in order to uh, increase the efficiency at any altitude. The as I mentioned, the the this uh, device uses oxygen from the air. Is combined with hydrogen and it produces electricity. Uh, when the when you increase the height of where the application is, in this case uh, more than 2,000 meters, the oxygen in the ambient is lower than at sea level. So mm, these uh, the characteristics, the operation and the efficiency lowers. So uh, the, uh, the 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 supply installed this uh, this control in order to increase the amount of, of, of oxygen to the to the fuel cell. The challenges, uh, there were several. Uh, some, uh, the COVID uh, affected severely the, the deadlines uh, and the, the components uh, should be installed in May 20 and at the end was installed in November. Uh, the hut is not accessible in winter due to snow and bad weather. Uh, the amount of helicopter is sometimes scarce, and, and its availability has to be uh, has to be thought very frequently. Uh, there are some disturbances in the microgrid that uh, that we found the stronger that was observed at the beginning of the project, and also remote connection is extremely difficult. Here is a picture of the transport of the electrolyzer to the to the Bachimanya hut. And while well, the installation, we did everything in the basement except for the uh, for the storage. Hydrogen was produced in November 20 and stored until June 21. Uh, well, there has been some malfunction in the stack of the electrolyzer in this summer. We have to repair it, uh, but we installed uh, some improvements like a timer and less insulation, and it's working very well now. The fuel cell did not work properly during the initial operation. We have to, to take back to the Aragon Foundation facilities to revise it, to check and adjust. And currently, all the system is installed and it's been tested. The electrolyzer is really robust and safe. The control system monitors any leakage and stop in case of that happens. And the fuel cell works, but it's not offering yet the performance expected, so we are working more on that. And well, this is a picture of the storage in the outside of the uh, of the hat. The hydrogen comes from these pipes in the bottom part, and the safe venting is down there. There are some pictures of the fuel cell in the control system and the voltage protection that we had to install in order to avoid those disturbances that I mentioned. Some pictures of the outlet of the from the webcam of the hat. Uh, with the storage almost covered by snow in March this year. And this is a, a recent uh, recent picture for, taken from yesterday. So, uh, well, this is, thank you very much for everything. This is what uh, what we have done or we are, what we are doing now in, in, in Batsimania regarding hydrogen. And well, we are just, uh, with some problems of time, but uh, well, we have uh, still some session from media in order to show the very good LCA results. 
and then we can uh, we there is a, a small presentation that will be done by uh, Julian Tami, who is our project uh, of, of advisor. So let's do that first, uh, Mitya, and then Julian. Thank you. So please, Mitya. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you and we see your presentation. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, in uh, hello again, Mitya from University of Ljubljana. Thank you, uh, um, Pedro, for a nice presentation. Uh, I will be very curious in the future if some data will be available uh, of the operation of the system in uh, Bacimania because it's very good um, uh, case of using the hydrogen in high mountains under uh, extreme conditions that are uh, quite different than uh, in usual cases in the valleys. Uh, in this presentation I will be brief I will briefly present uh, the work done in the uh, work package uh, or C5 uh, implementation action so life cycle assessment and environmental analysis uh, that University of Ljubljana and me personally was um, uh, in charge. Uh, of course, without uh, all the data from the HUDs uh, and all uh, um, assumptions uh, done uh, uh, with the team, from the team, uh, this assessment uh, could not uh, uh, be done and uh, it is quite a lot. I have also quite a lot of ideas to um, do this in the future for some publications because uh, also environmental impacts uh, are the future. Uh, the importance of uh, environmental impacts is uh, in legislation of the European Union and it will be a possibility to show these results uh, to the public, uh, to the politics, uh, to the industry, uh, why this is crucial and uh, for the future and how we approach this and uh, how we can use this knowledge also in other cases. Target in uh, C5 uh, work pa package was uh, first identification of technologies used in mountain huts, then inventory analysis that is more or less the most important step in the life cycle assessment. Uh, uh, then was, um, let's say, one basic uh, general model uh, to be set up uh, of uh, renewable energy sources, technologies, implementation and a bit of sensitivity analysis. We did LCA model of the case study that was Bachimania had uh, presented uh, uh, a bit before. Mm, and uh, we, uh, I'm still, if I'm honest, I'm still in writing of C5.5 because the guideline uh, is now uh, should be uh, done in, at, uh, at the really end of the project. So what was done? Five reports in the scope of the project, new inventories uh, based on the real uh, operational data. So um, this is very important and the real operation uh, of the real technologies involved in the mountain huts. Uh, we uh, had target emissions uh, that we uh, assessed that was CO2, NOx, SOx and particles. We, in addition, use CML 2000 methodology with 11 environmental indicators that gives us more deep information in the environmental, uh, environmental impacts and uh, uh, environmental footprint, uh, not just in the target emissions. Uh, within uh, my work uh, in the project, uh, I successfully uh, helped uh, five master uh, students uh, to achieve master thesis uh, uh, from Spain that were uh, in the Erasmus uh, in uh, University of Ljubljana, and then they mainly did that uh, in, uh, in the scope of the Sustainhats project. We uh, we did uh, two scientific papers. One is uh, on the Bachmania case that was linked with the work done before in uh, Fundacion Aragon, uh, Hydrogen on the Aragon, and one is under uh, uh, in publication procedure uh, that is the optimization procedure in the Lizara case. 
both scientific papers um, combine environmental aspects, technological aspects, and economical aspects. So we are talking about uh, three pillars here. Uh, of course, social is missing to be totally uh, pillars of the sustainability approach. Uh, but nevertheless, we are really, uh, we really showed that uh, combining uh, all three pillars of the uh, investment of the technological uh, improvements and environmental uh, approach gives us much better insight uh, uh, what we get uh, uh, when we do some uh, modifications. Uh, we did LCA of eight huts, not all huts uh, were done um, till now because uh, um, uh, some huts were uh, uh, included in the project later uh, and uh, I still did, didn't honestly didn't have time to do that but uh, as I said I have a lot of uh, uh, a lot uh, of uh, plans uh, for the future steps. Mm. So sustainability um, improvement uh, look, looked like this. We addressed electricity technologies, we addressed heat technologies, and we also addressed the means of transport. So in the transport, less fuel requirements means uh, lower impact. In the heat technologies, we're replacing diesel and natural gas boiler with pellet uh, wood or also electrical boiler when renewable energy sources are used for the electricity generation gives us much lower environmental impact. And in electricity generation, uh, diesel generators in Slovenian huts uh, were, be, uh, were able to put out of the operation because the huts are relatively small open just during the summer, so uh, there is no requirement to use diesel also for heating. Uh, and of course, replace this with al uh, alternative technologies uh, based on the renewable energy sources. This is the Estos uh, case of the electricity. This is a location in Huesca. Uh, this is just the one case that I will present the methodology or the approach. We had the electricity generation, first state of play at the beginning uh, and state of play at the end. Uh, so we uh, uh, first, uh, um, let's say, uh, address small diesel generator, uh, that was uh, used uh, just in the state of play at the end, uh, but not at the beginning. Uh, but of course, uh, the main gains were uh, to use a much less uh, large diesel generator and of course the, the um, uh, impacts went down. Uh, PV, pa uh, PV power, on the other hand, went up with the production that was actually the because the electricity is needed and with that uh, approach we then uh, um, calculated environmental impacts. Maybe the, the uh, 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 exact uh, numbers here are not correct, but uh, uh, it is uh, not even to be discussed in that way, but more or less uh, on the approach uh, uh, how we did that. And of course, these numbers can be inserted in the models uh, uh, and uh, different set of the results could be done. And of course, the hydro turbine, the, uh, uh, the generation went up a lot. And of course, this is the reduction of the environmental impacts. Heat generation in heat generation instead of diesel boiler at the uh, in the beginning uh, in the state of play at the end pellet boiler was used that means uh, going uh, down in uh, generation of the diesel and going up in the pellet boiler that means uh, uh, the the uh, impacts uh, environmental impacts will go down. Uh, also, in the case of transport, transport was used just uh, in the case of the energy carriers to be transported to the to the hut. Of course, some assumptions in these models should be done. Uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise nothing will be calculated. Some uh, basic assumptions. Uh, 
uh, were done uh, and uh, but not uh, let's say robust assumptions just uh, uh, we inserted the masses and we inserted the kilometers or the uh, hours uh, of the use of the helicopter and uh, uh, evaluated the reduced environmental impacts so um, uh, going uh, to the um, all huts uh, in the target emissions you can see that more or less in all cases the uh, from if we say that the base is 100 percent uh, so all target emissions were reduced in all cases uh, uh, of all huts that were in uh, modeling by us uh, you will say what about the pm uh, particles in lizara i will briefly explain it I think that uh, more uh, 300 percent or even 500 percent uh, the usage of the uh, wood was uh, increased. Uh, and of course, if the wood is combusted in the open fire, like uh, it is in the Zara case, some particles occur. So this is actually just one indicator that uh, indicates uh, that uh, a lot of wood was consumed, but uh, all other indicators indicates that uh, 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 fossil fuel uh, were used uh, in the other case. So all, all the results should be um, uh, interpreted in the right way uh, to understand the background of this. Just one, uh, one, one, one basic uh, diagram. So the uh, uh, all these um, uh, environmental impacts or the emissions for all the huts the uh, state of play at the beginning was uh, the red line 100% so co2 was reduced like this uh, nox like this sox like this pm a set just in the zara case a bit higher but nothing to be worried about because the wood is somehow toward sustainability uh, and uh, global warming that is actually linked with the CO2 emissions uh, uh, at the end also reduced. So uh, uh, I think that also in this case we met the uh, the targets of the of the project, uh, and this is the paper that was uh, already uh, uh, published in the International Journal of Hydrogen Energy, and this is regarding the uh, hydrogen system implementation in in Bachimania hut that was also a good way to show that we did not just uh, in the engineering way but we showed that it was also science uh, behind it uh, so the conclusions uh, um, uh, for the LCA Crucial is life cycle inventory, data gathering. Uh, 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 there is no specific databases for mountain hut technologies, so the adaptation and assumptions should be made when modeling. Uh, optimization of the transport is crucial uh, in also in reaching uh, or lowering these uh, uh, impacts because transport with helicopter has quite a big uh, impact. And we should look to the bigger picture beyond just target emissions, all, uh, also the indicators that are uh, regional, local, and also global, that is like uh, CO2 or global warming. Uh, but uh, uh, that outlines should be for the future cases to be calculated, but all the models now are prepared and uh, ready to be used. Thank you for the attention. I just briefly summarized the work done, uh, but it is a lot of it uh, behind it. Yeah, th thank you, Media. Yeah, it's, it's really a, a very hard, uh, hard work to gather all the information and to analyze and to yeah to extract uh, conclusions that are really valuable, as you as you mentioned. And uh, and well, hopefully this. Uh, these first uh, assessments that uh, you are doing can can be the ground for increasing this uh, inventory of, of data and assumptions regarding mountain hats. So it would be a really a good uh, a good result for for this. Thank you. So I uh, I think that it's time for the project advisor to say some words. Uh, Julian, uh, good morning. <laughs> Thanks for attending. It's a pleasure to have you in, in this final workshop and uh, it's your turn.
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for the presentations uh, of the LCA. Uh, so I, I followed, I, take over, I took over the project uh, myself a bit late, like the, the, the French huts, I would say, and uh, I was very sorry not to be able to visit one because I really li love hiking. So it would, be, would have been a very nice opportunity to, to go in the Pyrenean or, or, or somewhere else, but uh, let's start that. Um, but I hope maybe I will visit one this is one of these at one day. I will say, okay, this was my this was the life program. <laughs> this was one of my projects. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very interesting to see the the, the LCA. But maybe also for later, um, you will explain me because um, Mitya was saying that um, he will wait more data. So maybe I don't know if you will continue to gather the data from uh, for the operations and you you will still fine tune a bit the LCA or you will stay like that. I, I don't know. I don't know what are the your plans for the future. Um, Pedro also asked me to to briefly say some words about what 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 what, are, what is the interest of the project from the life point of view, the life program, and also to make a small presentation of life, which I will do in in a minute. But from from the life point of view, of course, this project was selected as a climate change mitigation because one of the impact is the reduction of CO2. But as Mitya mentioned, there is a lot of more uh, other impacts in terms of air quality. Also, and uh, this is very important because life also is not only dedicated to climate change, but it has been originally created uh, as a program for environment and nature. And I think the areas where the huts are are are, are based are mainly uh, protected areas and maybe also natural 2000 areas. And uh, and this project had also an impact maybe on 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 um, on the bio biodiversity. I, I assume so. It's very important project for for life. From the European Commission also, well, hydrogen is very important. Uh, there was a communication last year in July 20 on on, uh, on the hydrogen strategy for Europe. And green hydrogen uh, in particular is very, very important for, for, for Europe. So since uh, since the project uh, produced green hydrogen, it's it's uh, it's uh, very, uh, very interesting uh, from this point of view. Well, this was really as an introduction. Now I will uh, give you a small uh, like 10 slides of what is life and what are the, the novelties of life because we have also a call ongoing uh, uh, the deadline to apply is at the end of november so let me see if i can uh, share if i have the right to share yes okay you should see the presentation yes. in uh, in uh, full screen now yes perfect now okay yes, please so, as I said, LIFE is uh, the acronym is is uh, uh, um, something in French because we are based in Brussels, obviously. <laughs> this is called l'instrument financier pour l'environnement, and uh, it's one of the most uh, ancient uh, program for environment. Well, at the time, it was not that mainstream as now, so it was created in '92, and it, and it uh, financed more than 5,000 projects so far. Um, now, with the new financing period, you know that 2021 uh, it's the new period for the EU uh, of seven years. Uh, each program is a bit uh, revamped, some from time to time. So, the, the what we call the new is the, the one concerning this period. Uh, it, it is uh, very important for the, the implementation of the, the Green Deal, which is a top priority for the for the EU, as you you know. So it's the only program dedicated exclusively to environment, nature, conversation and climate action. Of course, all the other programs now have a bit of, of environment and climate change, but this is the one only uh, dedicated to it. And for the, this period, it has a budget of more than 5 billion. So it's, it's, it's a double from the period, from the previous period. So we have uh, different sub programs. We have four sub programs. As I said, we have the nature and biodiversity. We have the circular economy and quality of life, uh, climate change uh, mitigation and adaptation, and there is a new program that has been added from uh, before for, was funded under the Horizon 2020, and it concerns clean energy transition. So, but they all concur to the same objective, which is the, the shift toward uh, a new economy based on the clean circular energy efficiency, um, also concur to the protection of the quality uh, of life and of the environment and to uh, protecting uh, biodiversity. So very in a nutshell, the, the sub-program Nature and Biodiversity is mainly uh, 
uh, aiming at halting and reversing the biodiversity loss. And it, in this kind of subprogram, you will find a lot of actions uh, about supporting natural 2000 uh, network and mainstreaming nature and biodiversity objective into other policies. Uh, you will have these slides. I will not uh, go uh, on, the, on the details uh, on, on all these slides. Uh, the other subprogram is circular economy and quality of life. Here you have uh, circular economy, so all what is about waste, but you have also pollution, uh, noise pollution, air pollution, uh, soil pollution. For instance, this project could have been also selected under the circular economy and quality of life because you have also a reduction of um, your uh, improvement of, of air quality. Um, this is these are the typical actions: uh, uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation. The one uh, I worked for. So basically, here in mitigation, the impact, the, the goal is really to reduce the CO2 emission in the, of te with technologies. And adaptation is to adapt uh, urban areas or rural areas to cope with the effect of, of climate change. And uh, finally, the newly selected. Uh, the newly added program, it's a clean energy transition and it's a, a continuation of the Intelligent Energy Europe uh, uh, program and also uh, of Horizon 2020. And this program uh, concerned more um, softer actions, I would say. So there is no development of uh, technologies here. Uh, it's more uh, networking, it's more uh, elaborating guidelines, el elaborating tools. And uh, most uh, and mostly with an international partnership, so you cannot apply with only one uh, partner, which is possible in the other sub programs. So, what kind of grants we finance? We finance what we call the standard action projects. This one, for instance, was before it was called a traditional project, but now it's a standard. Act. It would have been a standard action projects, and we finance the strategic integrated projects. With what we call IPs, this is more for regions, for uh, local authorities to implement plans or countries also. We finance te technical assistance and we finance what we call other actions. So this is mainly for the clean energy transition pro sub program. And as I said here, there is a higher co-funding rate, uh, almost 90%, but it's almost exclusively personal costs. So there is no equipment, no depreciation of equipment uh, and no technology. You cannot uh, develop a technology and operate it and, and test it. And we finance also operating grants from some uh, NGOs. So now there are uh, currently three calls open for the standard action projects uh, for each of the sub programs I mentioned before nature and biodiversity, circular economy, and uh, CCM and CCA. So the standard funding rate is 60%, like uh, more or less we, we have now. And uh, it's one stage, so you have to, so if you want to submit, you have uh, to submit a full proposal, and uh, the deadline is 30, uh, 30th of November. The integrated project, as I said, it's uh, there is one call for two, for three topics, more or less: nature and biodiversity, circular economy, and climate change mitigation and adaptation. There is a two-stage application procedure. You have a concept note to, uh, so it's very close. So if you have not started now, it's uh, it's a bit late, or it's only 20 pages, and a full proposal by April, last uh, next year. But uh, again, this is very, this is these are big projects around that can last around seven, ten years, uh, and uh, ranging around seven, ten million euros. There is no fixed budget, but it's more or less what we have, and it's really to implement plans or strategies from. The public sector mainly, not only, but most, most of the time we have regions applying here, ministries, uh, environmental agencies from countries and this kind of thing. But you can be partner of one of these uh, uh, projects, not, maybe not coordinator, but partner. So what is new under life that now we have to apply under the funding and tender po portal for those who are uh, uh, used to Horizon 2020. This is the portal that uh, was used in Horizon 2020. So for us, it's new, but mm, for maybe most of our partners, it's not uh, it's not that new. So here at the link, uh, there, there was an info day recently. Uh, you, so you received the slides. There are some, uh, it was a virtual info day, so they, they have, there are some recordings, some slides, but you can still send questions to this functional mailbox that you see. 
And of course, you can also uh, write me. Uh, Pedro has my uh, contact. So if you need any uh, advice or question, you can just uh, try to write me. If I don't know, I will redirect to, 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 to another colleague. Also, in each country, you have what we call the national contact points for life. Sometimes it's even uh, at the level of the regions. And they are uh, of help and support for uh, the stakeholders that want to apply for life. So, well, in a nutshell, this is a bit what is life and what are the novelties of life uh, this year. Thanks a lot. If you have any okay. question, I'm available. Yes, thank, thank you, uh, Julian. It's uh, it's always good to hear the the novelties because sometimes we focus on developing projects and and we we, we miss some some other parts. And uh, a colleague of, of mine was in that info day some some days ago, and yeah, he he told me about this news uh, the news about the, the call. But it's uh, it's always nice. So th thank you for for attending. And uh, well, unfortunately, uh, we are running out of time, so I think that we have to come this uh, workshop to an end. Uh, we have decided to do some uh, debate between us, but I think it will it will took too much. So I think that we we are going to to end here. And uh, well, in any case. Um, uh, you can visit uh, all the attenders. You can visit the website, and uh, you can you can contact uh, me or, or or in general the consortium for any kind of of question that you may have. Uh, we are at this moment finalizing the the final reports with uh, covering all what we have done we have shown here in more detail, and the most relevant will be available in the website. So you will you will have access to to all of them. So well, uh, yes, please, uh, Julian. No, maybe a question, <clears throat> just in terms of um, continuation, replication in the future. Do you have any um, yeah idea of spreading uh, the project? Will with the final report will close with the LCA will be the final deliverable. So you have ideas mm -hmm. to continue something. We have. We have done at this moment during this month a lot of uh, dissemination in different channels. In fact, in this last weekend I was in Bachimania with uh, with a, a group uh, or a, a company who is uh, shooting some videos and will spread it through through the uh, through the different social networks. In addition, uh, I am aware of many interest in the results of the project coming from several parts. For one hand, the regional uh, the regional government of, of the, where Aragon is located here, in the, the main uh, huts are located in Huesca. They have shown very interest in what we have done and want to replicate uh, in in other huts of, of the region at least. And also some yeah, many many contacts during last weeks about uh, how to replicate in other places in in Europe. Uh, one especially in, in South Tyrol in Italy and also in France. I'm aware of several initiatives. So uh, I think that uh, yeah, the, 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 the project was uh, has been uh, very well um, in time, timely, very well uh, uh, developed and, and funded because now there's uh, more interest and also the uh, Europe is uh, supporting uh, this uh, energy transition with Green Deal and other initiatives. So it's uh, really a, a moment of uh, a lot of um, action regarding this. So uh, in any case, we will we will keep the website open for for several years, and we will uh, we will keep monitoring the what the the technologies are doing in the different hats. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. So, well, thank you. Well, if uh, I, I open the floor, if any partner can do some final statements about what they think of the project, or maybe the uh, what the the wards or keepers uh, think about uh, the huts are more sustainable. So, yes, if any one of you can say something, please. Uh, you can do it. Ciao. Oh.
Come on, Manuel, say something, please. <laughs> What's the, what do you think that the, the hat keepers uh, think about the technologies installed? Uh, could you repeat? The, the hat keepers. What, what do yeah, you they... think about? Do you think that they appreciate it? Uh, this probably better, better sustainability? Uh, it is an interesting question. It is they are always open to the to the introduction or to the implementation of new technologies that mainly reduce the diesel. But it is true that maybe we have found a gap between the uh, the installation or the ideas in 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 a computer or in an office and the implementation in the in the huts because we have it is very important to understand the work, the management of a hat, the work done by hat keepers before introducing new uh, tools in the in the hat, uh, because it need, it is not always uh, easy to to adapt the ideas to the to the mountain hat because are uh, are a special casuistic in the in the hat. But in general, they are completely open to to reduce the diesel, of course. Okay. Okay, thanks. And uh, Dusan, maybe you can say something about how do you feel that the hat keepers uh, think yeah. about? I can agree with uh, Manuel. Um, so um, um, clubs are, are or um, hat uh, managers are open for the uh, new ideas how to uh, better um, uh, operate the, the, the huts. And uh, well, in the case of Slovenia, huts um, maybe the the technology uh, is not such a new one. So PV and and uh, um, uh, wind uh, wind um, uh, energy, but uh, uh, I mean they were very happy that actually uh, we um, we managed to to uh, to put out the the generators. Uh, well. Um, at, at Pohacnik, they still have uh, for like a reservation, but uh, uh, actually they, they are not using it. Uh, so it's, they don't really. Um, they didn't. They didn't think that uh, this would happen. So um, they are pleased. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's important. One thing is to reduce the amount of diesel, which is well, more or less easy, uh, but uh, feasible. But to uh, achieve a completely sustainable or zero emission hat is not easy at all. So I think it's uh, you did a good job, and that the hat keepers can yeah, can be happy with that. And uh, Baptiste, what do you think of the French vision? You are you are muted. Is it is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Ah, here you yeah. in this particular case of the Don Parashi, the head keepers, uh, how can I say it? Uh, m uh, doesn't really care with uh, sustainable actions. It's uh, it's quite strange, but he mainly care with uh, simple uh, technologies to uh, operate the head, and uh, he if. He followed the refurbishment of the hut. He participated to it, and he will. He really uh, took part to the refurbishment, and he, he modified a, a water pipe system and stuff like that, just to make them work uh, more uh, properly and in an easier way. Uh, and it's a it's a way of. Uh, of uh, doing sustainability because if the keeper uh, uh, operate the hut properly, uh, take care of the equipment, uh, take care of the technologies, uh, uh, they will uh, long, uh, they will last longer. And uh, I, I, we have uh, some huts where the keeper doesn't take care to about the batteries or state of charge of the batteries, and the the life uh, batteries uh, drops uh, dramatically, and we have to replace them. Uh, much sooner than the uh, uh, predicted uh, um, battery life. And uh, I, I would say that, the, uh, uh, of course, we have keepers uh, which are really eco-friendly and, and which take uh, much more, uh, which, who pay much 
more attention to uh, environmental uh, um, uh, aspects. Yeah, aspects. And but the uh, uh, a really important uh, way to do sustainability is just to design uh, things and system that work simple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Baptiste. Uh, I don't know, Osvaldo, if you want to say something about uh, the Italian point of view. Hello, dear friend. For me, this project is the last project <laughs> because uh, in my future is uh, go to the mountain, go to the family, and uh, stop uh, the, <laughs> the mountain route. <laughs> Thank you very much for your cooperation. For me, it's a, it's a, a lot of experience in this, uh, in this project. But uh, I am old, huh? not uh, <laughs> but a little. No? And okay. uh, in the future, I, I, I change my position in the, in the Global Peer Italiano. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh. Okay. And thank you very much for this uh, fantastic uh, company. <laughs> okay, thank you a lot, Osvaldo. And in we fact, it's a pity. A last, that... a last meeting in Torino Hub. Yes. Yeah, that's what I went to mention. There is, yes. We, we, we organized, or yeah, we, no we, problem. we had the intention of, the, of doing the final uh, meeting or maybe this workshop. To, has been organized there in Refugio di Torino. Yes. But uh, sure. it couldn't be, so maybe we can find a future date for doing that. It would okay. be really uh, fantastic for me no to problem. visit there. <laughs> okay, so thank you bye to bye. all of you. Thank you, Julian, for joining us and, uh, and see you and, and have a nice day. <laughs> thank bye. you very much. Bye bye. Bye-bye, have a nice day.